Hey guys, I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, as we move forward to this next little lesson here, um, I just want to uh, remind you guys or kind of recap what we went over last week and we got into graph theory, uh, remembering that uh, we were talking about graphs and graphs are no longer the, you know, the X and Y axis that we kind of know of to this day of, of what graphs are, but they consist of these dots, uh, these dots called vertices, um, these lines called edges, and then the way that they connect and make up a, um, a all together is called a graph. And last week we tried to find ways to get through every edge exactly once. And we're going to do something a little similar today, uh, but slightly a little bit different. Um, so I want to start out with, uh, you know, what we did during class today. Um, we started uh, with a little history lesson. Um, we have a new mathematician here who came up with this game called the Icosian game. And uh, soon, um, you know, if we were in class, we would actually start out the lesson by playing this game. Um, the original game looks something like this. It was a wooden dodecahedron with a uh, peg. So there's 20 vertices on this side. Dodecahedron has 12 sides, and there's 20 vertices on this uh, on this uh, this 3D dimension, three dimensional uh, shape. Um, there was a peg at each one of these vertices, and the goal of this game was to actually uh, tie a piece of string around one of the pegs and you would start there and you would travel um, to eat through each edge loop around the next peg loop around the next peg and so on and your goal was to try to loop around every peg exactly once um, but also end back where you started so you have to go through every peg and then come back to this spot um, there used to be a uh, there's 3d versions of this game um, and they look kind of look like this. It's the same thing. It's just on a flattened version. So um, if you weren't in class today, you'll actually have a chance to play this game virtually. Um, so on the next slide, if you're following along with the with this uh, student paced pair deck, you have an opportunity to try to beat this game. Um, and so if you want to try to beat this game, uh, you can follow the directions here. You can either trace a a path. You can try to go to every vertex exactly one time. You're going to try to trace a path, or uh, you can um, number them off. So I can start out right here, one, two, three, and so on. You can only go to the next one if you have an edge to go on. So um, if you want to give yourself some time to play that game, go ahead and pause the video, um, and you can try it. Um, I'm going to give a solution on the next slide. Pause right now. And if you don't, you can just watch, keep watching the video. Um, here's a solution that I came up with. It is possible. Um, obviously, um, if we had time to play this in class, it would be awesome, but unfortunately we're not all together yet. Um, here's a solution. This is not the only solution. There are actually hundreds of solutions to this problem, to this game. Um, here's one that I came up with. Notice how I started um, at the top one, two, three, four, five, went all the way around. So I've got all of the vertices on the outside. Now, when I move in next, I can, this will be my sixth move, obviously, but realize pretty quickly, if I want to get back to number one, I can't move this direction because if I move this direction and I can only go to each vertex one time, I'm blocking myself to getting back out to the, or to the starting point. So I don't want to go that direction. I want to move in a, in this, in the opposite direction so that I can free that last one up. And so my next step looks a little like this, um, where I move all the way around towards the outer one, I stop here where it says 13, because again, if I were to go here next, then I'm blocking myself going back to one. Um, and I don't wanna do that. So I actually need to move in and I'll do the same type of loop around here um, in order to um, try to complete my loop. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, obviously you can see where 19 and 20 is gonna go. And then I can end back. Um, at my starting point from 20 go back to one and there is a solution to the game and you know what we look, looked at in class was hey what's the difference between this game what we just did and the graphs you did last week on your assignment on your learning assignments and the big difference here um, obviously is that um, last week in the Eulerian graphs, we used every edge exactly one time. Uh, but this week, just now, right now on this on the Icosian game, we only used every vertex exactly once. And so there's a big difference. And the difference in that makes 
uh, gives us a new type of graph, and this is called a Hamiltonian graph. And these graphs come in, in paths and circuits just like Eulerian. Um, and so a Eulerian, or I'm sorry, a Hamiltonian path is a path that visits every vertex exactly once. Um, just like a Eulerian path is every edge exactly once, Hamiltonian is every vertex exactly once. And you can see in the graph right here, one, two, three, four, five, I went to every vertex exactly one time. Um, I didn't start and end at the same spot though, so that's why it's just a path. If I am able to start in the, uh, at the same time, uh, start and end at the same vertex, then that becomes a circuit. Um, and notice how I don't have to use every edge in these graphs. These graphs are a little bit easier um, because you don't have to use every edge. You're just trying to travel to every vertex exactly once. And so um, here's two practice problems. Um, pause the video if you want to practice this one here. If you're following along with the, with the Pear Deck, um, here's an opportunity for you to practice once more. Um, pause. And if not, then here's a solution to this particular problem. Does the following graph have a Hamiltonian path or circuit? Um, you can draw on it or you can write the, the numbers, uh, but you'll want to label them path or circuit. Um, here's a solution to this problem. Uh, here's one that I came up with. Uh, I started it here at one. I went um, all the way around basically five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, notice how I started at the top left, I ended in the middle. This is only one solution, uh, but because I, I don't start and end at the same vertex, it's just a path, it's a Hamiltonian path. Um, and in fact, there is no circuit on this particular problem. There's no way for you to start and end at the same vertex. So it is just a Hamiltonian path on this problem. We'll do one more uh, example together. Um, you'll have an opportunity to have a chance. Again, here's a practice number two that we did in class today. Um, if you want to pause the video and try it on your own during, in the Pear Deck, now is your time. And if you don't pause and you're just watching through, um, here's a solution to this particular problem. This one's actually a little bit easier. I think most of the people in class today were able to figure out within probably like one minute. Um, here's one solution uh, where I started at the top went around the middle and towards the outside, I can end back where I started. So this becomes a Hamiltonian circuit. Um, this is a circuit because I started and ended the same vertex. So we now know the difference between Hamiltonian path and a Eulerian path or graph. Um, the one thing that you might want to know is that, hey, is there a trick to find a Hamiltonian circuit? And if you remember back to Eulerian, um, if every vertex has an even degree, it has to have a Eulerian circuit. That was, that was, that's a proof that we, we it's true all the time. Um, unfortunately, there's no such proof for Hamiltonian circuit. Um, there's not an absolute way to always tell, but there are some, a couple instances where they will occur, um, such as like if the graph, graph is in the shape of a polygon. Obviously, if it's in the shape of any polygon, no matter how many number of edges and sides, you can just go around the perimeter to, to create a uh, Hamiltonian uh, circuit. Also, and this one is less, I mean, this is more used if you were doing really big graphs, but um, any graph that has more than three vertices and every vertex has a degree that is at least half of those number of vertices. So this particular case always means there's a Hamiltonian circuit. I don't expect you guys to remember this one. It's a little bit harder than the even degree ones for Eulerian, uh, but this is some another way that they will always have a Hamiltonian circuit. Use this information, uh, review it uh, for your assignment. 1.2 homework assignments already posted. If you have any questions, email me and good luck.